Hi, everyone, and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Uh, in this week, we're talking about a question from Chandler, uh, who asks this. What's an easy way to delete all files within a project that I'm not using? For example, to the right of the edit window, I see like a thousand audio files. My project only has 18 tracks. Can someone enlighten me? I'm wondering if this is also bogging down my CPU. And is this normal? Andy, is this normal? Yeah, so let's work from the back of that question to the front. Is this normal? Yes. You only have a thousand? <laughs> 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 wow. Uh, no, it is completely normal to to get a very big uh, Eclipse list um, very quickly, actually, especially if you're doing editorial work. So that's number one. Is it normal? Completely normal. Is it is it bogging? What does he say? Bogging down the CPU? CPU? Is it? Yeah, using the CPU resources. Is it bogging down the CPU? Not at all. Zero percent. Any clips that you aren't actively using on the main timeline of a track that's mm -hmm. playing does not impact the CPU in any way at all, okay? So you can have, if you've got zero tracks in your session, zero, and you've got a clips list that has 100,000 tracks, clips. that does not bother the CPU. Sorry, 100,000 100, clips. It doesn't bother the, the CPU in, in the least, right? Zero. It's the clips that you use on the timeline. Um, so that's the second thing. Yeah, and I, I, I think we're like already here starting to to establish something because I, I think uh, this this poster here. Sorry, what was was Chandler? Chandler. Okay, yeah, Chandler. I, I think there's also uh, something that we need to clear up. Like, what is actually showing in the clips list? Because you say audio files, mm -hmm, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, it's. It's not always that easy. And I, Andy, I think you have got a session to, to show this on. I'll go a step further. We as a profession sometimes are a little bit vague with our wording. So what he wrote and what he meant might be different. But what you see in the clips list is never an audio file. Every single clip is pointing to something on your hard drive. It is pointing to a file. That, that's the nature of a DAW. And you'll see here in my clips list that I've got a number of clips. Now, some of these clips are a different font. These are bold. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. These have a different bold font. What does that bold font mean? It does mean something. Anders, what does it mean? Yeah, those are whole file clips, meaning the entirety of one file on disk, like one full recording, an unedited piece of audio. Um, yes, uh, except if that editing was consolidate, it would create a whole file. Is that whole file clip actually a file? So if I delete this, does it automatically delete the file? No, it doesn't. That's right, because this is not a file. It's a whole file clip. It's pointing to an entire audio file from the first sample to the last. That's the definition of a whole file clip. Now, any clip that is referring to a part or a segment of a audio file is called a subset clip. And all the other clips, except for these bold ones, all these normal fonts are subset clips. And you can see here, if I select this one right here, this clip is a subset of a whole file clip. That whole file clip happens to be this one. So that subset clip that you just had, can you pull that in from the clip list to somewhere else on the timeline for us? So what you're saying now is that you could trim this out in both ends, basically, and you would end up with the whole file clip. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. So let me drag this out. If I go over here, zoom, goes all the way out here. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So basically you took that edited version of it and trimmed it out again, and now it became the whole file clip again. It's not creating another whole file clip. It's just basically reverting back to the whole file clip. If you take that little subset clip again and select it on the timeline like that, exactly. And then you would go with the selector tool and just make a selection right in the middle of that and split it in two. You can see that we have now more subset clips underneath the heading of that whole file clip. Yeah, fantastic. So like I said, we've got whole file clips, we've got subset clips. The clips that are in your clips list, if they're not being used, do not impact anything other than potentially hard drive storage, right? And subset clips don't even do that. However, the amount and the frequency of clips that you have in your tracks being used can be a problem in some cases. 
this goes to something that we call edit density. So I'm gonna select all my clips and you're gonna see here all the clips on the timeline. There's about, it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, we've got 12 clips that are selected. 12 clips that are being used on the timeline, zero problem. That That isn't going to cause any kinds of problems. But in extreme cases, sometimes extreme dialogue editing cases, but usually something more extreme like multi-track beat detective can create tons and tons of tiny little clips. And I'm gonna do kind of a, it's not a worst, worst case scenario because a worst case scenario would bring my system to its knees, but it's an almost worst case scenario. So I'm gonna change my grid to let's say one second. I've got all my tracks selected here, all the clips on the track selected here, and I'm gonna go ahead Edit, I'm gonna separate the clip, add a grid. It's going to ask me for pre-separate amount. It doesn't matter in this case. What's gonna happen is it's going to separate all of these clips at one second increments. So that's going to happen. <laughs> Strangely enough, it's not going to change how that audio sounds at all. It's gonna sound exactly the same. But now when we're playing back the tracks at every second, the hard drive is going to be searching for a fraction of a file to be playing. And I've made not necessarily my CPU, but I've made my hard drive work a lot harder. Dave, if I find myself in a situation like this with a lot of little clips, my edit density has gone through the roof and my hard drive is having a hard time, what's a quick and easy way that I could reduce my edit density? And this, this is assuming that the clips have been moved? That's right. It's a comp. Commit. So Alt-Shift-3 to consolidate. Consolidate is going to be in your edit menu. So it can be down here, consolidate clips, right? But it's also option shift three or alt shift three, depending upon your platform. And what will happen is it creates whole file clips based on your selection. So have I created three new clips? Yep. Am I using a little bit more hard drive space? Yep. Am I reducing the amount of work that my hard drive has to do? Yes. Exponentially. And thus the CPU has less work to do as well because it's managing the hard drive. There's a part of the Avid audio engine that is dedicated to what's called disk management. And that part of the Avid audio engine is gonna work harder. But things like processing with plugins or anything like that, that's not gonna affect anything. Can I just offer a piece of advice? Because this is something that I use quite a lot. Like I do edits and then I would consolidate. But if you go uh, undo, and this is a state where you've got like all of these thousands little clips. So before I do consolidate, I create a new duplicate playlist. And I do that on every track, of course, but let's just go with the chop track, just to save a little bit of time here. And that's what I do. And now we've got a duplicated playlist and then I would consolidate shift option three. What this allows me to do is of course, if I change my mind at any point later and I wanna go back and re-edit something, I can still go back to the original playlist. And of course, I usually also name my playlist accordingly. So this would be like the edited version and this would be the consolidated version or something like that. So I, I will basically create a backup plan for me. It's, it's, it's really good practice. Yes, mm. I always do that as well. But to answer Chandler's question, it's the clips that are actively on your timeline. So right now, for example, with Dave's VO track 01, there's one clip, not a problem. So that's easy to play. But if I was to change here, that's gonna take a little bit more power, mostly from the hard drive, a little bit more from the CPU, but not that much, right? That's generally not where the bottleneck's gonna happen. Now, one of the things that can be unnerving is that when you take a look into a clips list and you see all of these clips, it's like, how can I find the clips that I really care about? There's some filtering that you have in here. And one of the things that you can do is you can show only audio, only MIDI, only video, only clip groups, right? And usually I want to show all of those. But every once in a while, I want to filter out the auto-created clips. And auto-created clips are the clips that are byproducts of editing tasks that you do. So if I don't want to see auto-created clips, look at that. All of that editing that I did created small clips as a byproduct, even splitting at the grid. And now if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and I can deal with the source whole file clips at this point. Yeah, Andy, I always thought that auto created clips is basically subset clips. And now when you filter them away, basically you don't see any subset clips. You only see the whole file clips. Is this a correct assumption? I want to be very specific. All auto created clips are subset clips but not all subset clips are auto-created. 
can you show this? If you separate one of these whole file clips on the timeline right now, would you get to auto-created clip or not? Let me capture this, do something we, we generally don't do. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's not on the timeline now, but it's still showing up in the clips list. Because yeah. that's a manually created clip. Mm. But if you separate a whole file clip just on the timeline right now, just hit B, for instance. I'm going to separate here. All of those created clips are byproducts of that separation. Those are automatically created. That's why I'm saying all auto-created clips are subset clips, but not all all subset clips are auto-created. And I just showed that with capture. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for clearing that up. Does that make sense? Yep, totally, totally. Great demonstration, by the way, Andy. Looking at this clip list right now, this is probably something that a person like Chandler might want to see. A very, very short clips list. I'm not bothered with the long clips list. Mm -hmm. since, since this is Pro Tools Answers, we get geeky with things. Let me show something different because sometimes a long clips list is just unavoidable. All right, so here we've got a session that's got a decent amount of tracks, tons and tons of stuff, some that's being used, some that's not being used, right? And you can see here, I've got a clips list that is, let's say, unavoidably long. Everything I have here, even if I'm not using it, is important to me. If I can't shorten my list, how can I at least make it more manageable? And that is something a lot of folks don't use. Something you probably, once you start using it, you're gonna use it with your shortcuts a lot. And that is find. I know there's Celeste in here, so I'm going to find. And you can see here as I type this, it's filtering the list. And you'll see here that in the clips list, now you've got a little bracket and it says Celeste. And that is now showing only the clips that have that sequence of letters in there. Click OK. And are all the other clips there? Completely, right? And if I wanted to clear that filter, I can clear find. Boom, and now I'm back. So here's the shortcuts. Shift, Command, F. That's on a Mac. Shift, Control, F on a PC. And that will find. So uh, let's see, find, drum. Great, and now it's showing me all the clips that have drum in them, or let's go with vocal, VO, right? So those are everything that has VO on them, okay? And then if I wanted to clear that find, Shift Command D on a Mac or Shift Control D on a Windows machine. And that brings me back to an unfiltered list. It gets slightly better. And this, I would say I do more with post-production than I do with music production for whatever reason. But you can also, if I go ahead and find something, let's go bass. Uh, sure. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert the entry. And as you do that, you can then change your filters. I can go ahead and shift command D and that gets rid of that. So it's not deleting anything. It's just filtering your view. And again, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, anything on your clips list is not in itself going to slow your system down. Great stuff. Is that as much as we can talk about on this subject? Oh no, we could talk for days. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, Andy, let's not, let's put a pin in it there. Um, so Chandler, I certainly hope that that makes managing your clips list a little bit easier than anybody else who's watching, of course. Um, if you got a lot out of this video, just gives us the th give us a give us the finger. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, you can give Andy the finger. <laughs> you wouldn't um, be the first. <laughs> but give me and Anders a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, it, it helps uh, the reach of our videos. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well if you aren't already. That also uh, helps us and it helps you. And hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload our latest episodes. We do it weekly. Uh, if you head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, you can find out a little bit more about us over there. And you can also check out uh, our Inner Circle subscriptions as well, where you can support Pro Tools Answers. We're a community-funded channel. And if you want to support the work that we do here and, and keep the videos and the information and the technique and stuff coming, um, then you can subscribe to one of our two tiers and you can find out about the benefits that they offer um, over at protoolsanswers.com. Uh, but until then, uh, let's give a massive thank you to Anders. Thank you. And let's give a respectful bow to Andy. You betcha. And just give a forehead slap to me and <laughs> we will see you guys in the next episode. Um, my name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers. We'll see you next time and we're out. <laughs>